All right. What's up, everybody? Welcome to High Five Fanatics. My name's Mike with Audio Architects, and I'm here with my co-host and cohort, Giles, from Home Theater Fanatics. What up, Giles? G Zilla. What is up, everybody? Welcome to Tuesday Night High Fi. High Fi tonight. Yeah. Are high we high fiing fi it up? Is the no, world a high fi system today? We're gonna we're gonna high fi it up, all right. We're gonna do something. We're gonna build some energy and we're gonna go crazy and we're gonna have people screaming and yelling and liking it. That's a song lyric, right? Screaming and yelling and liking it. Oh yeah, yeah. It's from uh it's from that OPP song. Uh -oh, yeah, screaming and shouting and singing it. OPP, how can I explain it, right? The good old days. I guess. When rap was rap. Rap. When rap was good. I think it's funny that uh yeah, I was listening to some of Eminem's new stuff the other day on um on Tidal and he he's trying to evolve with that new way of of how people are rapping, you know? But I, I didn't like it whatsoever. It's not him, huh? It it's, it doesn't feel right. He's got a style, man. He's like he's got his thing and I'll it's listen pretty, to you. Gotta, you got to think how 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 long can that last though? I think it'll last his entire career. I yeah, mean, with, for with me, the, with our generation, but yeah, you're right. He sunsetted for like the new guys, right? He's it's trying new. to appeal to the new guys. Yeah, but for but he's losing the older generation. You know, the generation that grew up with him that listened to him in high school is now like, uh, like, ugh, dude. I don't know. It, it just the. I, I don't know if it's the uh, the the timing or the or how I don't know. It, it just has a weird vibe to it. I don't know. I, I can't vibe I will, with. The I will say that um, between today and yesterday on YouTube, every time I watched a video, they would play that ad for uh, uh, Valerant, Valorant, Val Valorant, Valorant, the video, the the game. And it's uh, it's got Slim Shady is the soundtrack for the Valorant ad, so I guess I guess some folks are liking it because he was totally totally doing it. What's up, MP? What's up, AA? We're talking right about on. we're talking about Slim Shady. What's his name? Marshall Mad, Mad Piranha and AA are in the house. Sorry, guys, we don't have a special guest for you today. We will have one next week. Um. And yeah, so we're just going to kind of chit chat for a little bit and, and see where it goes. Um, this is going to probably be a great time for people to ask questions, do a little Q&A. Uh, we can talk about our upcoming videos, too, because we did uh, something last week that I really, really enjoyed. The bookshelf battle number three. Yeah. Yeah, that was fun. We had... Uh, we had the reigning champion, two-time reigning champion, the Aperion, the Aperion Grand, the Aperion Varus Grand Bookshelves, Aperion Varus Three Grand Bookshelves. They need to, they need to shorten up that name. That name is a mouthful. <laughs> they, that's not a name. That's a sentence. So um, those, and we had the Kef LS50 Metas, uh, and then we had. The, the one that um, I can never remember the name of the Martin Logan something. Martin Logan thirty five XTIs. So we had those three go head to head to head. You'll have to wait until the video comes out to. Uh, what the hell, is, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> what? What are you doing? <laughs> no, it, Piranha was like, "What's Giles drinking?" And I was just letting him know it's delicious. Mm. It's not alcohol, that's for sure. He's it's not, it's not freaking alcohol. weird on his own. <laughs> it's not alcohol. <laughs> Here's the reveal. Dude. Okay, so Spec Attack. I would normally say you have to wait till the Oh no, come on. He's gotta out. wait. He's gotta wait. He's gotta wait. But I kinda wanna tell him. <laughs> well, these these are our folks, these are our people, so I'm I'm all good with you telling them. We can I mean, get, if they promise to watch the videos on both our channels. Yeah, if you guys watch the video, I mean, oh man, I'm gonna sneeze. He's gonna cry thinking about the winner. 
I have the COVID right now. Um, so, oh God, Stay the winner, winner. Side of the thing there, the winner, the winner, the winner that won. Okay, I'll, I'll let you guys. Anybody here right now will will get to know the winner. The winner was the. Oh my God! Can we do a, can we do a I promise I'm not doing this on purpose. I'm gonna sneeze. We should. It would be cool if we could do a poll on this thing. It's like the. It's like the gods are trying not to let me say this. People guess everybody. What do you think? The okay, you guys Canadian guess who won between or? between the Martin Logan 35 XTIs, the Kef LS50 Metas, which are brand new, and the Perion Audio, uh, Varus Three Grand Bookshelves. <laughs> <laughs> I always wanted the, the Varus Grand Three Bookshelf Threes. <laughs> you were the, the funny thing is, is that that was the one that you were so certain about how to say in the video, and I was, and you were having trouble with Martin Logan Thirty Five XTI. Dude, I want, yeah, dude. It's like uh, it makes me think of that Crown XTI oh, amplifier. There are too many XTIs. Okay, so nobody wants to guess. Uh, it was the Martin Logan Thirty Five XTIs that one. Yeah. But okay, so it's but here, here's here's the caveat. Yeah, for me it was between the Martin Logans and the Aperions. For Giles, it was between the Martin Logans and the Kefs. Um, I personally thought the Kefs were amazing when it came to. <laughs> Thank God, finally. I knew that was coming. So I thought the Kefs were great when it came to um, clarity, mids and highs. Incredible. Aperion, very balanced. Not too high, not too low, not fatiguing, just a, a nice, beautiful speaker, but very needed needed more juice to, to push, you know? And we'll, we'll go, we will go over all this stuff in the video. But the Martin Logans had, did have an unfair advantage because they did have a bigger driver, so the bass response was better, and the, the clarity was really nice out of that. Uh, they actually have their own... We actually messed up, Giles, in the video. It... it God, technically is an AMT tweeter, but it's a folded motion, something, something proprietary, uh, Martin Logan tweeter. So it is what it is. It's a folded motion tweeter. So whatever. I blame you. I oh, blame you. Your shit. It's a, it's an I... AMT tweeter. So whatever AMT ribbon. I mean, to me, they're all very similar sounding. So, but it had a nice warmth to it. I like, I enjoyed it, but yeah, yeah. The Martin Logan's won, but not by a lot. You know, uh, with the criteria we were looking at now, value wise, I, I was actually wrong about the price of the Aperions as well. They actually are on sale for like eight ninety nine for the pair or seven ninety nine for the pair. So I'm like the eight or it's like eight or nine hundred bucks for the pair, eight hundred bucks. And I quoted a thousand, which was was their original price. Right. Um, so yeah, they they're 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 you know got a good sale going on right now, um, and that's a steal. 800 bucks for those are it's, it's they're, really good. They're, that's they're, a good deal. All three of these speakers are really good, but I took a different point of view than Mike did. Um, and which is good. I, I like that we don't always come up with the, the same answers. Uh, so for me, with with only considering playing the bookshelf by itself without a subwoofer, without anything else, just the bookshelf, the Martin Logan came in on top. And that's because I think the larger driver just gave it a fuller sound overall than the, than the Kef. But um, if you add sub support into the picture and add a subwoofer, uh, man, it's, it's a toss up. I, I, I don't necessarily think one is better than the other, but I think they're different. So it just mm -hmm. comes down to your preference on the sound. Uh, but without the sub, I would prefer to listen to the, the Martin Logan by itself. I'll tell you what I would love to do is uh, compare A and B, the Aperion uh, Towers, the Aperion Varus 3 Grand Towers, with the uh, Martin Logan Motion Series uh, Towers. Oh, yeah. So that, that would actually be a good comparison because I think the bass response on the Aperions would just eat it alive because the, the Aperion Towers are super bassy. But right the clarity and I think the warmth of that that tweeter on the on the on the uh, Martin Logans would be Logan. phenomenal. Yeah, the Martin Logan just uh, it's it's good gear. I mean, they have good gear all around. Sounds great. Um, and so, uh, someone mentioned uh, the electrostats. Um, yeah, that's what we're that's what we're hoping for. You know, someday is to review a pair of electrostats. I I've heard them. Um, I think they're fantastic speakers. I mean, 
super, super nice. So I'm excited to, to hear it in my, in my environment. Yeah. It's uh, I I've never heard them in my home before either. So it's always been at a store or at a show. It's or, one of those things that, I mean, unless we're reviewing it, 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 it's not, I mean, I wouldn't, I don't know if I would go out and buy a pair. I mean, obviously price wise is an issue and you know, it, I don't know. I don't know. I'm kind of scared to buy a pair. <laughs> I, would, I would have to have a pair to audition for a while before I decided that I wanted to pull the trigger and put money into them. Sure. Just, I just don't have the experience with them to really say, I know I like this or I don't like this. You know, we can, we can say, okay, this is how we feel about this kind of tweeter, about this kind of tweeter, about this kind of thing, about these, you know, ported base or sealed or whatever it might be. But that's the one thing that I just don't have experience with. I just don't have it. Yeah. It'd be cool. Let me ask you a question, Giles. So as you know, today I, 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 I was uh, testing out these cause I, I, I love going to Goodwill to shop and buy hi-fi at Goodwill. I'm a, I'm a total thrift store hunter and I stumbled upon a pair. I, I'd have to look at the model number, but it's a newer pair of deaf tech towers, mm -hmm. smaller deaf tech towers. And they have that, you know, that subwoofer on the side and everything. And I plugged it, every, I plugged everything in and everything worked f f phenomenally. Like everything worked really nice. So you, uh, and I struck up a deal, uh, probably six months ago with, uh, you know, your deaf techs that you had. So I, I haven't had a chance to hook those up, but one of the pairs of those speakers is considerably bigger than these. Oh, it's yeah. huge. I think it has the 15 inch, uh, yeah. subwoofer on the side. Yeah. The subwoofer on these smaller ones actually sound really good. So my question to you is when you used to play these, cause you had these for a very long time. I mean, you, you kind of grew up with these. Uh, this was kind of your first hi-fi purchase when you were yeah, like, younger. First big boy. yeah, first big boy speakers. So how did you like the bait? Did you feel that they still needed a subwoofer or was the subwoofer inside these enclosures enough to satisfy you in a two channel environment? In a two channel environment, it was, it's pretty good. I, I, I didn't say to myself, God, I just, uh, this is, this is horrible. So if you think about this compared to like the bookshelves that we just listened to, I mean, there's no comparison there. I mean, sure, sure, there, sure. There's sure. a 15 that puts out a lot of bass and for music, you're, you're good to go. Now, the, where I think that um, these were what they were not designed to do is that I don't believe they were designed to play like sub 20 hertz bass, like sure. in hardcore movie theater. I do believe what they were designed to do is play full range uh, uh, stereo sound for sure. Right? Yeah. So I, I never really had any desire to add a sub to them when I was listening to music. It well, was, dude, I think the clarity on them is wonderful. They, yeah. they have a really nice sound to them. Well, and uh, they're bipolar too, right? So that gives right. them like this whole different kind of sound stage than, than what you're used to, you know, compared to just point source unidirectional speakers, um, unipoles, I guess you'd call them, um, you know, the bipoles, you know, they send the sound out the back and they're supposed to make this big sound stage. It's a whole different kind of technology. And just to let everybody know, I, I only paid 40 bucks for the pair, which is a, a ridiculous, ridiculous steal. I mean, obviously, <laughs> Goodwill did not know what they had in their hands because those go, I believe, for, I think, 150 to 200 a pair or a, a, a piece or something like that. So, you know what model they are? I could, I could check in a little bit, but um, I don't know, man. Hold on. People are, people are going crazy. Dream speakers. Okay. What's your Giles? What's your dream speaker? Um, the, it'd be one of the Borsons. Have you heard them? <laughs> yeah, I have. Where'd you hear them at? Uh, Rocky Mountain Audio Fest. Why didn't I hear those? They had a whole humongous room to themselves. So they weren't like in one of the little hotel rooms. They were like in a ballroom. Like, so they, you know, they had all the rooms in the tower and then you'd walk way the hell over to the other side and they had the big ballroom areas. Mm -hmm. So it's like where, uh, uh, I can't remember. Oh, where all the Sonus Faber stuff was. Yeah, and all Mac, Macintosh had a big yeah, room. The fancy, fancy. PS Audio had a room. Well, they had a whole huge room for Borson. And dude, I mean, there are a lot of speakers that are my dream speakers, um, but dude, those things, I mean, damn. Dude, do you remember what speakers PS Audio was using to to audition their stuff? 
Uh, yeah, they had uh, they they had a uh, pair of YG acoustics. Okay. And uh, and that then they also, they also had their brand new set of speakers that are theirs, but not in their main setup. They, and I don't even know if they had theirs hooked up, but they had a, a just a floor display of their speaker. You know what's funny is that we haven't been able to get a hold of uh, Paul Paul McGowan. I would love to have him. You know what? But the, the funny thing is, he's he's our neighbor. You know, we yeah. can actually, literally, if we want to be creepy about it, we can drive up to <laughs> up to Boulder. wherever he's at. Yeah. I think it was he in he's in, he's in Boulder. I think. Yeah, somewhere yeah, somewhere right around Boulder, dude. He's got that huge what is it Infinity setup up there? Those old ass bro. Mom- that Infinity. The, the, you want to talk dream speakers? That's my dream speaker. That those Infinity. I think they're Infinity Kappas or something like that. Yeah, dude, those things are ridiculous, dude. For they, for they vintage, are the for vintage speakers, they were beyond their years. But uh, oh, I, I agree with that. Yeah. Uh, uh, Matt Piranha said JBL 100s are clipsless scholars. Uh, Clips La Scala. Now you're talking uh, youth man's youth man's uh, youth man's the one that has the La Scalas, right? Yeah, he's got a uh, he's got three La Scalas. Yeah, I, I'm, home, yeah, I don't know that I would go with La Scalas for home theater, but they're great speakers. I've heard. I them would love them. to. I would love to see what he his vision is on it, though. You know, and the JBL L 100s I'd have to hear them, but they're heard them. the new ones that they brought out are like four grand for the pair, and it's really all it is is just a speaker in a cabinet. You know, it's nothing. Yeah. There's no super crazy stuff going into it. So I, JBL knew that they can they can profit off that because nostalgia is huge. So, dude, the orange looks good on them though. Yeah, it comes with. I think it's like orange and they have blue and blue, they have yeah, orange and blue. Yeah, if you're a University of uh, our Auburn University rather fan, you know, buy one of each you know, and you're good to go. I, w- I was really into them when I was at. Uh, I think wasn't it CD that we saw them? That was all uh, yeah, geeking I, out about it. We stood there and looked at them for a while, and we were yeah, like, "I took a few pictures cool. as well." Yeah, but cool. uh, I mean, they look cool. They look nostalgic. You know, they look like they just walked out of the seventies or the eighties. But I don't know, man. I uh, I can't four thousand. No, not at all. Well, uh, I will say, and and I don't know if you agree with me or not, because um, I, I don't know if we've sat down and done you know really long listening to these. But the the Alex that I've got my hands on right now. Uh huh. Dude, those things sound really good. I mean, they're so they're two way with the uh, with the ribbon tweeter, and dude, they sound really good. And the you know the whole tower is a transmission line as well, mm-hmm. so it's not just uh, it's not just like wood to make it taller. It's a transmission line that's uh, phase aligned for whatever <laughs> magic goes on. There. Dude, I, I honestly think it's funny when you did that A B test between those and the Stark uh, ICH three, yeah. Which, which they're, I think, uh, what's it called? The the Alex. The Alex are what, a few, a couple grand more, right? Three grand more, I think. They like so the, the Starks are like eight grand. They're four, four, four and change each, and then the Alex are ten grand all in for the pair. And dude, I was actually kind of like back and forth depending yeah. on what song you were playing. I was like, okay, this one sounds better. No, no, this one sounds better. You were trying to have me guess which brand it was. And I got it wrong both times, which was funny um, because I was certain. I mean, the Starks sounded really good. I mean, it also good positioning because they were were on a stand and the others, I, I might have been not so ear level with it. But I mean, the Alex yeah, sounded maybe. really clean, dude. I thought the Alex sounded really good. And I heard them the other day when I was at your house and I'm like, dude, those are some good sounding speakers. Not only do they look good. But they sound fantastic. So yeah, I think the darker color that they have is is the prettier color. So I've got the light wood color, which are which are okay. They're I mean I'm not saying they look bad. The finish on these things is just absolutely stunning. Um, but I want to talk a minute about the video that I just filmed with them um, earlier this week or in the last week or some sometime. Anyway, it's uh, so they uh, they have two sets of uh, binding posts. So you can separate, it's two way. So you can separate the mid uh, base driver from the tweeter and power them separately. Mm-hmm. God, I'm going to die. Holy crap. You're right. Yeah. Ugh. Ugh. I guess just thinking about this just made me get emotional, uh, <laughs> but I've got a, uh, an Acurus M eight, eight channel mm-hmm. amplifier. So it's like 200 by eight. And, uh, I'm like, and I was powering it off two channels, right? So I was just using two of the eight channels to power these speakers. And I said to myself, no, I have to do better. So I made a video where I bridge that amp to four channels mm-hmm. and then buy amp each of the two speakers 
and dump, you know, like 800 watts <laughs> to each one is pretty sweet. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. I bet you uh, barely have to turn it up. It just goes. It's, it's plenty of juice for them. Um, although I can't really tell that much of a difference, honestly. <laughs> I think I think 200 by you know and it, into each one was more than enough for the speakers, uh, but uh, you know just to say I did it, it was kind of fun to you know do the do the buy amping and doing dealing with the cables and all that stuff, and it looked really cool and it was fun to set it up. So yeah, plenty of headroom. Whoa, uh, Specatech, have you guys tried the SVS Ultra Bookies or Mad Pro? I want to try SVS Prime Pinnacles. Okay, so. Specatech has the the prime pinnacles, doesn't he? He's got the ultras. The ultras. And you you were auditioning the prime the, towers. The prime towers. Not the pinnacles. The, the prime towers sounded okay. I thought they were all right. Yeah, they're totally cool. I, I did a video on those and I thought they for the money, and I hate when I say for the money, but for the money. Well, the, the, that's their lower, that, I think that's their lower end offering. It's, it's their lowest end offering. Yeah. So I mean you weren't expectations were, were already there. Like you were expecting them to be like just a, a lower end of the, of the totem pole kind of speaker. But I mean, it sounded fine. I think if, you know, they, this- they, they were good. They were, they were good. They were solid speakers. Um, what it did want me, make me want to do is hear the ultras. Yeah. I, I, I it makes me want to hear the ultras because if those are that good, you know, the ultras ought to be, you know, incrementally better. So I'd really like to hear the ultras. Can you answer that question from John? Um, okay, let me put it up. Uh, a pair of DD fifteen ten D four subs. Uh, I don't even know what a DD fifteen ten D four is. I thought DD audio was car audio. I think DD audio is car audio. I don't. I don't, dude. I don't know anything about car audio. I I, I wouldn't know where to buy them unless I'm looking up a DD fifteen ten D four. All right, so it's a DD Audio, and it's a it's a ten inch. Oh, with a forty FS of forty three hertz. Doesn't play very low. I guess in a car though, and, you know, it's different. Um, no, I have no idea. I've I'd never heard of DD Audio until just right now. I'm sorry. I mean, I've seen it in forums and stuff. Uh, John, if you're looking for good uh, car audio subs and uh, stuff like that, definitely check out Stereo Integrity. Um, I would recommend that over DD. I mean, uh, they make a good 15 inch at least. What the guy? What does this mean? Walmart. What? (laughs) Walmart. He's like working. See, okay. I think he's just just dissing on the subs. Walmart. <laughs> oh my god! You're so mean. Ran by monkeys. You're so mean. Ran by monkeys. What's funny about Walmart is that over the last couple years, I see their car audio department get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Yeah. I remember back in the day, it was kind of like where we're at Circuit. You can go try out different things, you know, try out different decks with different subs and different speakers and kind of see how everything sounds. Yeah, that's not a thing anymore. So, well, mainly because most newer cars are coming equipped with, you know, their stock stuff is is good enough for most people. Dude, it's I'm crazy really complex to, make, to take but, out, man. Like to, to rip out one of those integrated things now? Yeah. Imagine trying to replace the console on a Tesla. You okay, know? you know what, dude? You know what? You know what, dude? We need to go over to this guy's house. He has way too much cool stuff. Kevin's all, Kevin's a tease, though. He he's is. All like, he's like, well, he's like, I, oh, look what I got. My, Wilson, my Wilsons are really over, good. Dude. COVID. No, dude. Like, we're coming over. I, don't I care. would like to hear the Wilsons. Um, yeah, the Wilsons are, are interesting. Right? your dress. We, we're coming over. <laughs> the Wilsons are interesting because, like, even at uh, at uh, Rocky Mountain Audio Fest, they had a whole room, but you know what they didn't have? A speaker plugged up to play sound. You remember that? What? The, no, 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 nobody w- <laughs> They did not want to show off their stuff because what if someone says, 120 grand for that shit? No, thanks. You know, they don't want to run the risk 
Yeah. Of yeah, anybody. Or not to mention breaking it. What yeah. happens if it breaks? What happens if there's a power surge? What happens if something happens? That's $120,000 they just lost or have to fix, you know? I don't know. I, I have never personally heard a pair of, uh, of Wilson anything, so... I don't think they're going to be sending us anything anytime soon either without, a, without an armed guard. <laughs> so it, it'll show up with those guys in the suit, like at the room, like for those dudes. We're here. To okay. There seems to be some kind of chaos going on in the, in the comments right now over S- SVS. Uh, Bryce, dude, what's going on? Bryce says, I'm not, I'm just not an SVS fanboy. Sorry. I don't think anybody here really is an SVS fanboy though. Cause I, I respect the company. I think it has, good offerings i don't own any of their products i have reviewed them and what uh, the sb2000 i reviewed was pretty cool uh, uh i don't know spec dude i i kind of want to i kind of want to check out your stuff dude i wish i was in canada i want to see your stuff i would love to go listen to those subs why and why is spec tech not on the show right now dude we need to bring him on dude he doesn't like us he does. He's here. He's like halfway here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he could have been on the show if you wanted to be. But I, don't know, I guess he didn't. Okay, hold on. Here we go. Ran by monkeys. I would love to hear a really, really good system to know what to shoot for. You all have good stuff. Where, is, uh, where are you dude, at, Ran by monkeys? Honestly, dude, uh, it's not about having good stuff. It's, I mean, my, my system's a hodgepodge of weird stuff put together. And I think most people enjoy that, enjoy, enjoy doing stuff like that. Oh, speaking of which, Uh-oh, even go. though they can't return an email, I'm still kind of interested in going with the shit, um, not the Freya, but the one before it, the 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 one right under the Freya. It's just, that's the well, one. Not the Modius. No, it's the, it's the shit, um, not the Freya, the... Uh, shit preamp. Yeah. Uh it starts with an S, I think. Uh, well, shit. I'm gonna find it. I'm gonna find it. Uh, the Loki. No, the Loki's the, the, saga. the, the saga Plus. The, yeah, the Saga Plus. So saga I want to do the Saga Plus with the Loki because the Loki's the tone control. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You're right, and I think the Loki would be good in that little setup. The Saga too. Plus is the the preamp, and it has a ton of preamp stuff because I am looking into getting a standalone CD player other than the one I already I already have one. But it's humongous. I want something smaller. And I saw that um, – what's it called? What's that company called? Uh, Project has the CD box or something like that, which is like a little small standalone CD player, which is I think – Is it a transport or does it have a DAC in it too? I don't know. I need to do more research on that. But I, I, If it doesn't have a DAC, that's baller because I'd love to have – that would be cool to have a CD player just to transport and then be able to put your own DAC on it. Right. That would be freaking baller. That would be pretty cool. Um, Here's something else that I think you should look at, or upgrade to the to the to the blue sound that I wanted from the beginning. Oh, the Vault yeah. Two or whatever. Yeah, there's that. But dude, check out the check out the pre the pre ninety from Topping. Topping pre ninety. Yeah, check. if you don't want tube. Now, if you want tube, it doesn't have to be tube. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm really not. I mean, tube is kind of cool to look at. Topping what was it? Pre P R E ninety, I think it's the pre ninety. Ah, it is. The only problem with these smaller ones, dude, is I need ooh, and it's really expensive. But but it's got a thing called the EXT ninety. I see it. Your buddies over at Apos. Yeah, all about this thing. Um, let me look at the back. Look at the yeah. Look at the back. Once you get the the pre ninety and the ext ninety, there's a picture down at the bottom that's got both. Oh, I see dude, it. It's got four pair of balanced inputs. Oh, dude, it's all it's all XLR and two pair of uh, RCA inputs, and then it's got one pair of XLR out and one pair of RCA out. So, dude, four yeah, four XLR to RCA. That is pretty damn cool yeah most of my stuff is all rca though i guess i could do rca to xlr maybe you you could if you wanted to but i i think over time what's going to happen is your stuff is going to more and more become xlr well if you'd like to send me uh this setup i would gladly do this over the shit stuff because they 
didn't return my email and I'm really kind of hurt about that. I'm kind of, kind of broken inside actually. When I send an email and I, you know, don't get a response. I just get, I start to cry. He gets hurt. He doesn't get angry. He's just sad. And I'm just, anyway, I thought that was a cool preamp because I haven't found a lot of preamps that have, you know, this, that aren't like $12,000 or something stupid. And, and, you know, I think this is probably the same price as the Freya plus. So it just depends. What's your poison? See you later, Specatech. Specatech's He's jetting. Leaving, leaving the building. Later, dude. Have fun. Hope it's not too cold. Uh oh. I knew someone. I knew someone was going to mention it. <laughs> he liked yeah. the video of me and my girl, dude. I, I watched you guys together. I could feel the sexual tension. Oh, stop it, dude! Don't say that in public. I'm going to get a text message now. Who are you guys talking about? What are you talking about that shit? Um, so I'll tell you what, man. You got to help me pick a guy. I feel like there's not many choices in preamp world, but I think there is. And I'm just not, I guess I'm just not looking in the right place. It's like a quest for me right now. So uh, projects got to, well, okay. What are your requirements? Well, I would like for it to have... One, two, three, minimum, minimum three inputs and one output. Or, I mean, two outputs would be premier for, you know, a I sub. Think, dude, I, I, I honestly, for me, I would go with the two options or the three options that we've talked about. I would either get the side. I mean, the problem the with the shit is it has everything I need. It has everything I need. It has the two outputs. Yeah, it has cool. one of inputs. And it's tube, and it looks cool, and I can get it in black. So, it comes <laughs> in black? Yeah, dude, you can get the Saga in black. What? You, just, you can't get the Loki in black, though. Saga comes in black? No way. Yeah. Yeah, you're missing out, dude. You and your Freya. Oh, uh, um, you can get it in black, but I don't see it in black. They don't, they don't, they can't, they don't show it. They just have the option when you buy it. Well, for me, I prefer my two channel stuff to be all silver. So, I, I really like that Freya in silver. So, I'm going to do that. I don't know, man. I, uh, oh. but just remember the saga when you raise the volume and lower it, it's going to go. I know. That's the only thing I don't like about it. I love that. <laughs> I'm like, okay, okay. Matt Prana has a good idea. Vintage preamp because it can be. So I, I, I mean, it doesn't need to be. It's this not like day. there's a lot of new technology, right? It's just like an, a selector button. All it really is is a con. It just it's a pass through, you know, and a, and a control. I mean, oh man! If if you, if somebody could find a preamp that also has like a forty band slider graphic equalizer for, <laughs> for that'd be hilarious. I would totally use that. <laughs> he, he would just make it his V. He's like, I'm done. No, I'm, I'm done. telling you, the more I play with uh, equalization, the less the less it's becoming a V because I'm, I'm beginning to realize that in a car, a V curve sounds fantastic, but in real life, in a, like a system, you got to have a little, you got to play with the mids and the, the bass can't be too crazy. If you're running a sub, uh, I mean, the highs could still be nice and nice and bright, but I don't know. It's, uh, it's a little, it's a little crazy, man. But, uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll definitely once I make a decision. Obviously, you guys are gonna hear about it, and you guys are all gonna watch a video about it. But Kevin, what's up, yo? I haven't talked to Kevin in forever. I've been missing yeah. some Kevin S. He was supposed to call me back the other day. He's like, Mike, dude, I got some some stuff going on, but I'm gonna call you back. I uh, dude, I I died of old age before that happened, so I'm kind of uh, I'm kind of okay. sad. That's another person that. That made me sad. Sad today. I miss. I miss Kevin. I, I do miss him. Kevin too. I miss talking to Kevin all the time, dude. He's just too busy for us, dude. He's got better things to do. Well, he's he's making that money now. He's like he's like I got to cut eighteen thousand subwoofer boxes. These people are killing me. Yeah. Uh oh. Speak of the devil. Yeah, dude. We were just talking about you because some someone was trying to buy Nick. Nick is my buddy from Stereo Integrity. Um, someone was trying to buy some DD subs or some shit like that. And I'm like, dude, just go to Stereo Integrity's website and buy some subs there. Don't don't buy no DD business. Ooh, hold on, hold on. I put the wrong. Nobody one. even knows who DD was, dude. Ran, and some guy that said get it at Walmart. So. Ran by monkeys knows the your heart and soul. 
If I've had knows. the FX Audio Tube One. I have the Tube Zero Three. I think they're about fifty bucks. I have the Tube Zero. Okay, that has bass and treble controls. Yeah, I have the. That's what I use right now. The Tube Zero Three. I, I'm just trying to upgrade. <laughs> I can't be using FX Audio all my life, but I think it works great. I think I, I've done several videos about the FX products. I mm-hmm. think FX products are actually they're good. Very, dude. very good for the price. And I know that we're, we keep saying that, but I, uh, I hate saying that. But dude, this is crazy though. Like the the tube amp cost me thirty nine bucks, you know. And I did another video where I used one of their amps and one of their tube amps together, and it was able to push, you know, a pair of of uh, sensitive bookshelf speakers just fine. I think it was putting out uh, two by fifty, so it was fine. It was a little D class amp, you know, amp. Nothing, nothing wild, but. Um, I don't know, man. It, 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 I like FX audio, but I want to it, yeah, kind of grow, you know, with, with my, as my products grow, you know, I want to grow with them. So that's you know, my- I think you should just invest in something with lots of XLR capability because that's where you're going to be at, dude. It's going to be all XLR all the time. Okay. Okay. Nick says DD no. And then John said a bunch of stuff I don't understand. See, uh, in uh, that model, in a one and three quarter foot cabinet with a uh, Dayton Audio Amplif- RS-265 passive radiator. So it's a 10 inch. Well, a 10 inch with a single passive radiator, that's kind of interesting. Usually you want to double up on the cone area with a passive radiator to get it to balance correctly. So you would usually use a single 10 with two 10 inch passive radiators. But uh, then he's got a 220 watt amp. So this is the base reflex design. And he says it's got a better uh, FQ. Okay, John, are you trying to use this for home theater or for car audio? Because uh, I don't know. It just doesn't make sense to me right now. So, uh, yeah, can you if you can clarify if you're using this for home audio or car audio. It sounds like you're doing car, car audio setup, but then now you're throwing in other stuff in the mix so i don't know okay ran by monkeys he's all like i upgrade my stuff oh hold on hold on regular guy audio i'm in the lo-fi crowd so i don't think i fit in well here i don't think don't ever think that that no, that's, that's completely that, wrong i want to stop that right here right now and i never want to hear that shit again yeah. because we where do you think we started you know we didn't start with with you know five six seven eight thousand dollar pieces of equipment you know, we're in a business where, you know, this is part of our, our gig, you know, we get to review this stuff, but personally, we know how hard it is to grow in this industry and to grow in this hobby. You know, no one's expecting anybody to have the best of the best. I mean, look at me, I'm looking at the shit saga, which is like three ninety nine, And I know that might be expensive to some people, but in the grand scheme of things, there's preamps out there that are 10,000 plus dollars, you know, that, that, you know, I don't know what they sound like. I probably will never know what they sound like. So this isn't a very, <laughs> this is not a very high fi crazy high end, you know, $20,000 speaker cable type of, uh, you know, podcast that we're doing. We like to keep it real. We like to keep it light. We, you know, like I said, I got FX audio and I like it. So that should tell you something as a $39, uh, preamp that I, I enjoy and that I use in my normal system. So, yeah, don't ever think that we're we're not you know we're, we're too hoity toity or, or you know nose in the air about audio because we're not you know. I, I will say though, don't don't buy the thirty nine dollar Boss two way crossover. <laughs> Did it not turn out as, as you? <laughs> it didn't turn out too well for me. Oh, <laughs> it was not too good. It was too bad. Uh yeah. My life goal speakers are Totem Hawks. Oh, Totem is a great a great brand. I don't know the Hawk though. Let me look at the Totem Hawk. Totem Hawk. Totem Acoustics. Uh, oh, they look cool. Two way. Um, is that like a six and a half? And a tweeter. They're they're very elegant, dude. Dude, Google the Totem Hawk and tell you me. You got what it, brother. Like. I just wanted to respond to regular guy audio. Yeah, man. I. Uh, I never want to feel I don't know I never want to make anybody feel alienated or that they don't belong because this Hi-Fi Fanatics is for anybody interested in audio, you know, uh, audio architects. You could see the 
the kind of products I, 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 I review that there's, it's a huge, it's all over the place. It's all over the place. Same with Giles, oh, Giles all over the place, you know? So I don't want you guys to think that we're like, you know, uh, and I know there's YouTubers out there that, that kind of stick to the higher end stuff and stuff like that. And that's fine. You know, that's fine for them. Um, but I, I think being all over the place is good because you guys get a feel for a little bit of everything. And let's say mm-hmm. there is a piece of equipment out there that's a little bit more expensive than you're used to, or a little bit more expensive than you're comfortable with, or maybe even a little bit out of your budget. However, if you know we try it out for you and we're like, hey, this is actually really, really good, and this may improve all sorts of things for you, I think that's a that's a benefit, you know. And that may may help you make a, a you know responsible a, a, you know decision down the road. Uh, that's what I think. I don't know, but I I don't know anything. All right, um, what were you saying, Giles? Sorry, I don't know. You talked over me, and I just quit. <sighs> dude, I told you. <laughs> no, I'm saying, dude, that. go Google Google the totem hawk. Totem yeah, you're talking about some totem hawk. thing. All right, totem tell hawk. me what you think it looks like. Totem hawk, what? Yeah, that's it. T O T E M H A W K. You like you like that sound, Giles? I got I got that new keyboard. I know I do like that. I, I heard that. I'm all like, oh yeah. It's the it's the Corsair that you have. Clicky, yeah, dude. I love my Corsair. Oh, dude, I'm looking right now for a um the the Knight Sword uh mouse to go with it, but it, I cannot find it anywhere. Okay, the Totem Hawk is rad. That it's like super. Can I share, I'm gonna share this. Hold on, I'm gonna share this with everybody. Look look at it though in uh in, in the black ash veneer, I, I know you'll like it better. I kind of like the mahogany. Okay, so yeah, I was already on the black. <sighs> the I think the white is rad. The that that chrome right here, that whatever that is, that metallic color. Um, I don't like the metallic on the black though. If it was like a black metal, that would have been way cooler. You know what it looks like though. That a looks okay. Bit? The white one. Go back to the white one. That has the Perion, the Perion wood color. Yeah, dude, uh, it, it looks like the V lot. It does. If you made the feet smaller it's like a, and it's black, like a bigger version of the V lot, like a big V lot. Yeah, it it six and a half and a one inch. Um, I guess six and a half. No, five and a half. Five and a half. Five and a half. That's weird. It's a weird size. You better get you some subwoofer for action. Yeah. Oh look. Yeah. Oh, I thought it said no, no, dude. Look at the frequency. Really, really? thirty-two. Yeah. No, really, thirty-two oh, hertz. Uh, These guys are really like with proper room positioning. Yeah. Proper, yeah, yeah. These guys crawled so many times to get that thirty-two. Hertz. They're all like, "We're gonna get thirty-two hertz. We're gonna find know. where the thirty-two hertz is coming from." Sensitivity is not too bad. Eighty-eight. That's fine. Yeah. I I call it you oh. know rolling off at forty-five. That's what That's I'm guessing. Nice drivers bespoke acoustic engine. Why do you, who made you bring these up? Uh, somebody in, in the chat said this is their dream speaker. Handmade crossovers. What, what's the... and totem stuff is good. I've heard totem before. It's That's nice. Kind of what is that? That's particle board, man. That looks like particle board, dude. It does. I'm sorry. Like... We don't mean to be like bashing this shit, but it doesn't look fiber board. Variable density fiber board VDF. Is denser at the extremities than the interior to reduce repetitive nodes and resonance. Variable de- is variable density fiberboard a fancy way to say particle board? Dude, I think it's made out of the same stuff as the Martin Logan uh, 1600. What is Dynamo. this? What is this madness right here? Dude, they need to talk to a Perion about their their nylon uh, threaded stuff, dude. That's no, that's got to be that's supposed to be the jumper, right? Okay, here we go. So, yeah, I remember the jumper on the Perion stuff. Yeah, dude, dude. No, the jumper and the Perian was all right. It was like that's what I'm saying. This is the oh, okay. wire connected to each yeah, other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, sound isolation claw. I like the sound of that. The claw. Uh, yeah, dude, looks it good. looks like that image was like photoshopped on top of the floor. It doesn't look, it looks like it's floating. oh, it totally was, dude. That floor yeah. is fake. But hey, dude, everybody does that. You know, can't can't be all be winners. Some random chick right here. Uh, that's that's cool, you know. Totem, kind of a, kind of a like a like American Indian style style thing. I want to say I've heard of this company before, dude. They had Totem at a, um, at that joint QAV. Ooh, look at this, dude. Uh, I know yeah, that's where we saw it. it. That's where we saw it at QAV. Remember, yeah. I remember the 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 logo. That's what I remember. Remember, I, I mentioned yeah. that QAV yeah. the logo. Yeah. 
uh, floor, standard. That floor standard, dude, and go up to their high end. I just there want to see go. Yeah, let's go to the best elemental <laughs> metal two. Oh, the wind. Look at this, dude. Dad, now we're cooking with fire. Look at this, dude. Look at that. Uh, two two eights in the tweeter. I think it's kind of ugly. I like this better. I do too. That, you know what? You know who that looks like? That looks like a freaking uh, Eggleston Works speaker. Yeah. I like this. It has the, you know, you got your deep bass here. You got your mids right here. You got your highs. A little bit of everything. Nice full range. I like a full range speaker. I, I probably would have done that in a Aplito. Dude, I kind of like the red. I've never said that before, but dude, the red looks good. It's called fire. Cause dude, that red is fire. That red is fire. <laughs> the red is fire. White looks pretty cool, but I think the, everybody's already seen a white and a black. But dude, if you have a red speaker in your home, dude, that means business right here. They're claiming 24 hertz on this thing with a hell two five and a quarters. And it's got an eight and a half inch though. So I can I can I can <sighs> 24 hertz though for an I'd eight? say I'd say low 30s with an eight and a half. Yeah, I'm thinking low 30s too. 24. Uh, does it say with correct room positioning? No, it just says in room. Uh, oh, in room. They're, they're probably counting on some kind of room. Uh, I got that board I again, know. dude. And this chick is back. I don't know. This makes me. Uh, this just makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, I don't. I don't not. Not really. I don't, I don't want to see really. that. I don't know. I think it's yeah. It's it, it's it's probably god awful expensive. Uh, you know, it's just it makes us 21, 24 hertz at eighty one decibels. Yeah, <laughs> it's way low. Yeah, you can barely hear it, but it's moving. <laughs> it's like my stomach can, does twenty four hertz at like three decibels. Um. Uh, did we miss anything else that we want to talk about out of the comments? What's uh, what do you got coming on in the uh, what do you got in the queue? Uh, well, here I, I'm going to complain a little bit about my video making woes. So oh, one okay. of the challenges that I deal with is just time management. I'll do it. I'm going to do it. It's time management. So you know, I got a wife and kids. I got a full time job, and then I do this stuff too, right? So you know, it's just uh, it's, it's a lot of demands on time. And so I've been trying to find ways to do things better. Um, and one of the things that I was looking at is finding someone who can help me edit videos, right? So if I can just get the freaking video, the content in the can, and then have someone uh, make it look pretty and edited, uh, it'd be great. But dude, I just, I, the, the guy that I found, he's cheap. And that's probably the problem uh, because, dude, I don't want to spend hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of dollars a month either on edit, video, video editing. Um, cause I just don't have hundreds of dollars to spend on this, but, uh, you know, I just, I'm not happy with the job that he's done and, uh, woe is me. I don't know. I'm just complaining now. Um, just complaining anyway, but for videos, dude, I got the, the, uh, Dan Clark headphones are coming out. The Aeon twos, that video is coming. Um, the video where I set up those Alex, uh, by Ant is coming out. Right we on. got the uh, we got the crossover event with the bookshelf battle. Um, we've got I've got the uh, crack and build video that is the one that I'm trying to deal with editing. Finally, right I know, dude, it's it's edited, but the edit on it is horrible. I hate it. it sucks. Okay. So regular guy audio said, I know a thing or two about low bass. Cracks me up. Some of the responses get claimed. Hoffman's law always tells the truth. What's Hoffman's law? Oh, it says. Um, Base, and, how low can you go? Death row. What a Hoffman know. So it says that when you're on the planet Hoff, base is always lower, especially when you have a Bantha. Oh no, that's Hoffman's law. All right, Nick Lemons. On that note, what do you guys feel is a good characteristic of a floor standing speaker? Totally neutral, a little bit of bass, less treble. I don't know, man. Oh, yeah. Well. You, you can answer it, and then I'll answer it. Okay. Uh, floor standing speaker. I like full range. I like to be able – like the Aperions I have here, they – honestly, if I play them without a subwoofer, I'm fine with it. I don't have a problem. I, I can enjoy them, you know, because they do go pretty low, and they sound really good. They have nice highs, nice mids. Now, when you're lacking – on a floor stander, when you're lacking bass and lacking good treble – 
and it's just not balanced. Uh, that sounds like a, I don't know. It's a losing proposition. That's what that is. Sounds like a Polk speaker to me, to be honest. But oh, oh the hate, the hate in this room with for the Polk. Oh my God. Um, so a good characteristic of floor expanding. Okay. All right. So this this is gonna be totally different than what you were looking for. Look what you're. Oh, shit, I can't talk. What you're looking for, but uh, so floor span standards are big. All right. So it's not like a small bookshelf you've got on a stand. I. If I'm going to have a floor standard, dude, I want something that looks good. And I know that probably is not the kind of thing that you were asking about. But, yeah, it's going to sound good. But I want a, an attractive speaker because this is a piece of furniture. And the style of the speaker also speaks to kind of, you know, my my aesthetic of what I like in, in the house. Um, a tower speaker, I want it to be as full range as possible. If I'm going to have a big-ass piece of speaker in my system, I want it to have some bass. Right. If it doesn't have bass, then I'm just going to get a nice monitor or, or, or bookshelf. Dude, Stand Bryce, Bryce hit it on the, on the, on the head. I want off axis, good response uh, for yeah. home theater. That's very important because if you're, you know, if you're sitting in the wrong spot, you might be able to miss a lot of, a lot of good sounds. So yeah, off axis response is huge in a home theater as well as just a regular listening room. You know, you don't want, you want, you don't want a very directional speaker unless you're like, you have them pointed right at you and you're sitting in the same place all the time. That's no fun, you know? Uh, okay. There's a lot but of so AA, I, I agree in a, in a dedicated theater build that's designed to be a theater from the ground up in wall hidden hundred percent, man. I, I don't, yeah. I don't, I don't want to see them. I, what I'm there is I'm there to watch the screen and hear the sound. I'm not there to look at the speakers. I think we had that conversation last we week did. as well, where uh, you know if it's two channel, I would love to see them, and I want them to be. I don't want them to look good. As well Heck sound yeah! Good. Heck yeah! But yeah, in, in home theater, dude, architectural, you know, speakers and in you know, uh, you know that kind of integration is becoming more and more and more popular. So, it's just a matter of time, you know, before. You know, most of your new homes are already kind of built in with 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 that kind of stuff. So there'll be holes in the wall. Have you seen the the raid hose? I don't even know if I'm saying that right. You're a hoe. Ray R A I D H O. It's like radio, radio radio. They have those their top of the line stuff. They're the huge things. They gotta be like seven foot tall. Raid, they look baller. Raid hoe. The power of raid hoe. These guys need. These guys had to have known what they were doing with that name. Okay, uh, yeah, those are huge. They, they, yeah, and Mike knows when something's huge. Yeah, because it's used to it. Used to. It. Oh my God, dude, it's like a liner. A eh? share it. Let me add it here. Bring. Yeah, that those things are crazy. I don't think they are particularly. Are you sharing it or am I sharing it? It's up there now. You shared it, and I put your screen up. Okay. I don't think those are particularly good-looking speakers, but they are large. Yeah, they are large and in charge. How do we look at these? There we go, dude. Yeah, they're not, they're not the best looking speaker, but they're crazy. I like the feet on them, and I guess those are ports. I guess it's front ported for those two. I whatever what those it sounds are. like, dude. I bet it sounds. I bet it sounds pretty damn good, but I bet it has no bass. Let's see yeah. what they're. They're, they're going to be like eighteen hertz or something stupid. Yeah. Twenty five. Twenty five. Okay. Oh that's probably not God. right, but that's that's really low. Twenty five hertz to fifty kilo, kilohertz. You can't even hear past like eighteen or twenty kilohertz. This is crazy. These people are out of their mind. But, that, but all the dogs in the neighborhood just go ape shit. Oh, dude! Are, are yeah, speakers, yeah, seriously. Are those speakers on the side? No. No. What are those little things? How does it get? I mean, unless those are subwoofers, I don't know how this can get down to twenty five hertz. So it's got four. Look at the specs again, real quick. Uh, okay, so it has one sealed ribbon tweeter, two hundred millimeter diamond mid range, and four hundred and sixty millimeter diamond bass drive. How much is a hundred? What's one hundred and sixty millimeter in American inches? Alexa, how many inches is one hundred and sixty millimeters?
six point three inches. So you're, we're talking. You can get, so they think you can get twenty five hertz out of out of a couple six and a halves. That's that is some aspirational quotes right there. They're they're definitely uh, they're definitely on a on a good one. Yeah, dude. I don't I don't know. They they're certainly big. Yeah. All I'd right. Rather see some twelves or something in there. Well, let's go ahead and wrap things up. Um, I'm ready for. I'm actually ready for bed, man. I've been running around all day, and I've been fixing computers and stuff. So, Heck well, yeah. well, it's all it's all put back together. My trusty. Uh oh, <laughs> something just fell out of it. Uh-oh. Uh no, it's it's good, it's good. Uh, but yeah, I had to replace a lot of stuff. And as you can see, I got my, my audio architects, my stereo integrity. Got all my stickers on there. You need you need to get some stickers, homeboy. Yeah, I'll get I'll get some. Um, um, I'm gonna yeah, get some sticker paper, bit. and my wife can cut them out on her thing. But dude, I was gonna say I was looking at my MacBook today, and I realized, like ten years old, you said. He, he, nine, yeah, yes, yeah, from two thousand nine. <laughs> right on. I'm like, damn. <laughs> all right, folks. Thank you guys so much for um, joining us. Uh, next week we're going to have who we're going to having next week, Giles. You have Modulus. So and this is something I don't. A lot of people probably haven't heard of. It's a home theater media room thing, and they make uh, a source that competes with Zipedi and all the others. So it plays files, it streams, and uh, it also DVRs, and it will DVR streamed content too, which is something I've never heard of another company doing. So Dude, that's pretty rad. So, yeah, so you can. Uh, We'll welcome them with open arms. Thank you guys again for joining us and being a part of our uh, Tuesday night live stream every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Mountain Time. Join us. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's all we got for you tonight. That's the end. We will see you uh, next week. And just check uh, check it out Friday. I, that's when I put out my videos on Audio Architects. Oh, even more important, if you haven't yet, please subscribe to Audio Architects on YouTube subscribe to home theater fanatics on youtube we're also on instagram facebook twitter everywhere everywhere you look and uh, check out mike's discord channel <laughs> dude there's only two people in there it's just I you know, I, my, it's like mine it's been there forever and it's like three people yeah dude do, wait no check out giles's discord channel his is way better than mine but um but yeah you'll you'll get you'll there's a lot of projects coming up that i'm, I'm working on myself and i know giles is working on his own projects so we're going to have a busy year, 2021. Busy, Absolutely. busy. All right, guys. Have a good night. See you.